Hello there, this is Five Pedal Builders We Think You Should Know. Boom. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. I feel like I'm in some sort of uh, 80s sci fi uh, TV show, Dan. That's exactly where I wanted you to Yeah, film. yeah. yeah. That right. pedal show, Odyssey Nailed. 2001. Nailed yes. So um, this is going to be fun. I, as you may well know, we, uh, we get sent lots of pedals from lots of people. And there are, you know, there are many brands you all have heard of. You know, Boss, JHS, Wampler, you know, the, lot, Keely, the, a lot of the big boys. All the people we feature regularly. Yeah. yeah, and they're all awesome and we love them dearly. What we wanted to do was show you some people that you might not have heard of. Yep, and at this point you're going to be screaming at the screen, what are you talking about? Of course I've heard of them. Well, you may have done, but not everyone will. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that the, the five that we're picking today are not necessarily on everyone's radar and they are not the aforementioned... Boss, Keeley, Wampler, yeah. JHS, you know, yeah. all, all the all the big boys. And guys that are doing something something cool. And so we've got five today, you know, and we'll, you know, but there's loads. We hope to do more of this. Yeah, we'll repeat this. So yeah. if there's manufacturers you would like us to um, check out, please comment below. And if you are a manufacturer, get in touch and we will uh, hopefully get onto it. Cool. There's a, there's a few names in today's show. Let's just go over them. Okay. What have you got, Dan? You've got... We have Ranger FX. Yeah, we've got Spaceman on the board Spaceman there. Spaceman on the board. Uh, I've got Sakalis from Greece and also Reeves Electro. Yes. And one more somewhere? And Pig Dog Electronics. Pig Dog Electronics. Okay, so you may or may not have heard of some of those guys. And we've selected two or three pedals from each and we're just going to have a quick run through, quick listen and urge you to head towards their websites and check out their wares. Yeah. See what we can discover. Who are we kicking off with, Dan? Let's start with um, Ranger FX. Right. So, so David Ranger, it's really... He's a guy I've wanted to meet for the longest time. And at the last guitar show, we were running in to do our thing. Yeah. And he was there on the corner. Oh, no and I was way. like, oh, ah! Because I really wanted to meet him. At the Birmingham As guitar yet, show, yeah. I haven't met him. Oh. But he's such an interesting guy. So uh, he started life out as a guitar player, as a session guitar player. Yeah. And his whole thing is that he wants to create interesting sounds for for hooks in songs. Okay. Right? Great. So he comes from that world. Where everything is, it all comes back to how this, uh, you know, in, how does it work in music and will it inspire you to create something that's, you know, that works for a song, which I love. Uh, but he is... His stuff is so creative yeah, he and is unique. Re revered by a lot of designers, isn't he? Yeah, a lot of big really pedal is. manufacturers and hold David in extremely high regard. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Actually, there's a really great interview that Josh from JHS did with him. Right. Um, but yeah, so fascinating guy. Um, so, for example, let's have a look at the Dr. Frank Frankenstein Chop Fuzz. Mick, if you'd be so kind as to turn it on for me. I'm going to make a guess. <laughs> I love that. I That's love the on that. switch. Yep. Um, How does that differ from the bypass switch? Uh, so you've got, yeah, so that just powers it on and then, then, then on and off for like true bypass. So you that can, attaches uh, the power to the circuit. You can use your, yeah, I mean, does that pass CE? Does it pass CE? Uh, yes, I'm sure it does. 
<laughs> I'm sure it does. Um, okay, let me just make sure. Okay, mod. Let's turn that off. Okay. I'm gonna put my glasses on, mate. Okay, so this is um, this is the chop fuzz. The two amps we're using today. We uh, broke out the old super. Haven't heard it for ages. Got really crazy aggressive high end. So let's give it a go and see what happens. <laughs> And of course, the Marshall 1987X 50 watt plexi. Did I nail it? You did. Go on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes, both together. Are you okay? Because that's hitting you more than me. It's pretty full throated. I like it. <laughs> okay. It'll be better when we put some gain on it. <laughs> right. So if we, uh, I'll just turn, turn the volume down a little bit for a second. Yep. And then turn it up to taste. Yeah. Awesome. It's awesome. I'm guessing these switches, these knobs come in when you turn this switch on. Do Give they? it a go. Come on then. Get out of town. It's just the best thing. Right, awesome. Okay. Beyond so awesome. Then we have, um, this is his little, uh, it's like a little pressure pad expression pedal. Yeah. So now if I plug this in. Oh, does that give you control over this? So yeah. So okay. have a, have a, need to have turn a play. On. Yeah, turn on. And there you go for it. Hit
Right, wonderful. Win. Right, total win. Now, um, the one that you heard at the start of the show is the Drone Ranger. So this is, it's a delay, but it also gives you two drones to yep. play over. So if I turn that on. So you can get the two drones to sort of beat against each other, and it's really, really cool. Get the get the drone going again. So the, does the interfere always drop it by a tone? Uh, I'm not sure. I think you can manipulate that. But it's it's one of those pedals that, um, you know, you can just, you can coax all manner of drone stuff out of it. So you say it's a delay. Yes. Do you have to have the drone on? No, you can turn the drone off. So if you play. Yeah. And I'll turn the drone down as you play. guitar, interfere, pitch up, what's that, on and off, or to be controlled by expression pedal here? Uh, no, there's that. There's the... Turny pots or yeah, switchy it, ones. Uh, you can either have the interfere pitch up or pitch down. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's really cool, like really creative. There's not a square angle. There's not a right angle on that pedal. I love that. The box. It's amazing. That just that takes the production cost from this to that, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but because that's exactly how he saw it, and yeah. so that's what it's going to end up being. And finally... I just got to show you this. This is called the mini bar, and it's just crazy. So you've got the way this works is it's a, it's an overdrive distortion pedal, and depending on the liquid that you pour into this little capsule, uh, will control will basically dictate the sound that you get. So what's in, that doing? Capacitance or something? Well, you've got two things. You've got a these two screws here. Basically, they measure. Um, resistance or something in, in the fluid. Then you've also got uh, an LED. So there's a there's an LDR in there somewhere. So depending on the viscosity of the fluid and then also how uh, light sensitive, light, you know, how light goes through it, basically sets up the resonance in, you know, in, the, in the overdrive and gives you all the different tones. So in true COVID style, anyone that's noticed that Mick and I have been touching um, the, the same pedal. So I'm gonna have a little squirt. Give you a little squirt. 
D- Dan and I are exposed to each other by this we point, are. by the we way. Are. But, hey. However, I'm going to fill up the mini bar with a bit of hand sanitizer. Could, can you can you switch it on while you're doing it or not? Um, there you go. Will that work? <laughs> It's brilliant. Quite an aggressive sounding overdrive. It depends on what you've, it literally depends on what you've got in there. So if we put in something that's, that's darker, yeah. um, then you get a lot more bottom end. Have you got any? We, yes, let me, let me um, get some, do we, do we have any washing up liquid? Green washing up liquid? Yeah, yeah, in the kitchen. Okay. All right, give me a second. So I'm going to add some washing up liquid in there. Okay. It's thicker and darker. Yeah. So we'll see what's um. <laughs> I heard a bit more bottom end come in. A bit more in. bottom end come in. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's, it's actually not that much darker. Okay. But even just a little bit greener. Yeah. And you hear it change the frequency and bring more bottom end in. <laughs> it's awesome. It's just awesome. There are forums of people who put whiskey and, and just like anything you can imagine they've stuck in there. <laughs> he says, he says if you stick bodily fluids in there, you're going to avoid the warranty. Okay. So that's that's the line. There is a line. Um, but I, it's, you know, man. So super creative. Um, super fun, you know, and definitely uh, a brand that should be on people's radar. This is Boutique Pedals. That is right? super, super Isn't it? boutique <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. Cool. All right, David Ranger, there'll be links below in the um, description for you to find these, these guys online if you don't know them already. Yes. Okay, so looking at Spaceman effects. Uh, so Spaceman out of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, more more people. From more Portland, people Oregon. from Portland, Oregon. It's amazing. Who else is from Portland, Oregon? Andy. Yes, yeah, so Andy's moved to Portland from Pro Guitar Shop, uh, formerly Pro Guitar Shop, now Reverb.com, and Andy Demos. Yes. Andy Martin. Yes. Benson. Yeah, Benson. Catherine Bray. Yeah. 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 And some nice mountain biking. Yeah. And yeah. also the the location of Gravity Falls, which is my son's favourite program. Ah, yes. So think, a lot of stuff going on. I think they make some nice wine up there too. In in, uh, in yeah in, in yeah. Portland. Good. Um, okay, Cole so That's a cool what, what's that? Cole guitars. Cole. Cole. Oh, Cole. Yeah, Saul Cole. Yeah, really cool guitars. Is he up there as well? Let's move to Portland, Oregon. Wow. Um, did you notice? Because when I met saw Andy again after he moved there, he was so chilled. He was just right. really yeah. relaxed. <laughs> Yeah. Like, okay, I'll, I've okay. never known him not chilled. To be fair, yeah, but. that's true. That's true. Um, okay, so uh, a couple of things um, from these guys. They they've got a couple of different production methods. They've got their standard um, line of pedals, and then they'll do small batch runs of, of things that are just fun. Um, but it's engineers, um, artists, musicians, and everything that have formed this company. Okay, and you know they 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 really uh, they care a great deal about what they do super creative again so like this is the gemini uh, the gemini 4 we've got a germanium fuzz and a silicon fuzz uh i think we did this on pick and mix once, yeah we've you know? done this yeah just we did this quickly on pick and mix and then you can blend them together in parallel and switch phase as well so it's really cool so is, if, is there a sweepable mid filter do i remember as well uh i'm not sure i think you so that yes so you do yeah. have this filter per side yeah yep yeah. so again if we um Let's have a listen to the germanium side first. Go for it. Yeah. 
So, like, super cool, right? He's Can very we... Billy Gibbons. The last note was Billy Gibbons. Awesome. Uh, Just the last note, mind. I'd like, like to, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll um, put a line ahead. Yeah. So you have to go on the silicon side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that top end in the in the, the yeah yeah in the super yep when you roll this down and you, it's ice pick go on yep. listen to that so now what we're going to do I'm going to blend between the germanium and the silicon it's almost muffy. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, because that because of that filter, that EQ yeah. part, it's yeah, it's yeah. great. So I'm gonna blend between them and I'm gonna change the filter on one or the other. Yep. Yep. Have so have a play. Great fun. Like so many different fuzz sounds in there, but being able to blend them, there's a phase switch as well. If you notice, I was switching it in and out of phase. So when the mids are together, it'd cancel out and go really scoopy and then all that add. It's literally that, isn't it? You've got an unbelievable range of, of mid range yeah. control. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, really cool. And then we've got the Saturn 6, and this is what they call a harmonic booster. It's like a low gain overdrive harmonic booster. Uh, it's really clever, like super, super high input, uh, high input impedance, like two meg. So it doesn't load the guitar at like basically at all, um, and so you know keeps all the all the sustain and everything intact from the natural resonance of the guitar. So have have swung an of this. I'll bring the gain down yep. and use it as just basically a booster, and then I'll turn the gain up. <laughs> That's quite remarkable. Isn't it amazing? Because the strat on its own, here you go. There aren't many boosts that I've ever played that are literally more. Yeah. That is nothing changed in the feel. The tone just got more. We're at a point where it's not really overdriving the amps at this point. Yeah. Just a... M it's great, isn't it? You wouldn't think that that was a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, it's really There hard. aren't many things that do it. No. Keeping all the transits and everything in, in yeah, place. Yeah, and, yeah. It's really, really... The feel remained identical. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I mean, everything they do, they, they do some really clever stuff. They do a um, like a really clever mixer that has got... Um, you can control CV voltages and things with it, and it's got LFOs, and it's like like really creative, really clever. Mm. But you know, when it comes to like building something, is what you would think is as simple as a boost. Um, so we do that again. Try it with the Lester, can you? Yeah, yeah. Thank 
really, really lovely. It's at that that level of quality that you kick it on. It's like it everything feels right. It sounds superb. You know, that's that. You know, you know who you are. You've got a guitar you love. You've got an amp you love, and you pedals feels like terribly cheating to you. <laughs> it feels like you know. I don't want to give my sound to that thing on the floor. I don't want to be constrained by it. That is the boost for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. really great. Yeah, wonderful. Really, really great. Cool. Okay, so there's our first two. Let's swap out. Yep. yep. All right. right. Back in the room. Nice. Very good. Ooh, watering eyes, Dan. Sorry. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. It's your emotional guitar playing. It is. People often say in the comments how emotional you emotionally connected you are to playing the guitar. Just because I make lots of people cry. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, please stop. Oh, please. Make that guitar speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in joke, you make that guitar speak and it says, please put me down. That's good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> right, moving on. So we've done two. We've got three more to go. Yep. Let's start with Reeves Electro. Yes. Sorry, I, just, I was going to say Reeves Audio. It's Reeves Electro. Mm -hmm. This guy called Marcus Reeves, and Marcus's story is pretty interesting. <clears throat> I think we both... No, let's not tell any lies. You discovered Marcus Reeves uh, after a picture that Brian Wampler posted, correct? Uh, yes, I think Brian Wampler retweeted, reposted one of his Instagram pics and just showed the back of one of his pedals. Let's let the picture tell the story. So check this out. You've heard of point to point. This is point to point. There's no circuit board. All of the components are soldered directly to the other legs of the components. Basically it's, nobody makes pedals like no that. No one does. I saw that and I was, um, I got all emotional. Yes. And so I, I just reached out to Marcus and I had a conversation with him and he's just the, the loveliest guy. and. Uh, and I was desperate to get my hands on a couple of his pedals and, and yep. try them out. So the first question I asked Marcus after after seeing that was, is he any relation to Dave Reeves? Right. Okay. Of high watt fame. Right. Because I looked at that and thought, ah, that's old school British point to point beautifulness. Mm. He's not. Marcus um, has been building pedals for himself and mates for 20 odd years. Yeah. And he works in the tra he worked in the travel industry. Okay. And then COVID hit. COVID. So he found himself with a bit of spare time on his hands and decided, well, you know, it's kind of now or never. Mm. And he does. Marcus does. If we talk about boutique pedals, Marcus does absolutely everything himself, from yep. drilling out the cases mm. to doing the artwork and etching. I love the artwork. Yeah, it's they're, they're all kind of etched um, with this sort of gunmetal finish. Um, so cool. Yeah, and his reasoning for doing the point to point is partly out of pure nerdery. Mm. You know, he just loves it, and he's a real nerd in that respect. And but also, he his his view on it is that you might not necessarily hear the tonal difference between mm. a point to point wired pedal and a decent, you know, through hole circuit board one. So, but you will feel it. Okay. And his inspiration is those is those particular recordings music which is in the moment sure and is pure flow and that's his inspiration right so if we haven't built it up too much um i think he's got four pedals currently on his website we've got two fuzzes here today uh, mm -hmm. the first one is the 2n2 face which is a fuzz face type circuit that uses transistors 2n and then four twos a yeah it, not a transistor that i know anything about or have ever heard of certainly okay. not it for the sort of fuzzes that I play. Anyway, it's a fuzz face type. Um, it has uh, volume and gain.
Very gritty. Trouble the hum uh, humbuggies. <laughs> You know how I tend to prefer silicon fuzzes yep. over germanium ones? Yep. That exemplifies that for okay. me. Okay, yeah. Uh, because, I mean, I don't know if it is germanium or silicon. I'm no, assuming silicon. it's silicon. silicon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it just has an edge and a grit. The grit. It's yeah. And it, loud. So normally yeah. for my fuzz face to be that loud, the volume control would be pretty much all the way around. Right. Just wind the volume up for me, can you, Dan? Let's see how much it, do, do, it actually has. Okay. okay. Yeah. That is outrageous. That is awesome. When you got up there with the, um, it did something ultra special to the super <laughs> reverb. The super reverb just was like going, la, 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 hello. <laughs> wow. That's killer. Yeah. Absolutely killer. I'm going to try that for a bit, I think. Um, all right. So moving on, uh, the- Black hat sounds. Black hat sound. Okay. So this is based on um, one of Marcus's other pedals, which is the 108 sound, which right. is a color sound. Oh, cool. Type first. Right. He's saying this one uses some special NOS transistors, mm. transistors mm. which are, I had to write it down so I could remember it, TO106 TUN, T-U-N, black hat transistors. NOS from the 1970s, hence the name. Um, it's a little darker and more gainy than a Mark One style tone vendor, apparently. Oh, okay, cool. Have a go. That is special. You really feel it. Man. One of the criticisms a lot of people, um, people who don't love fuzz, one of the things they struggle with, you, I, struggle with sometimes, is um, it just, everything goes to mush and there's no dynamic left. Mm. In both of those pedals, I felt like the guitar was very much still there mm. and I was still in control of what was happening. That's really cool. Um, the knob on the right is a bias and you'll notice that when I turned it right down, it starved the transistors to the point where it starts to gate really nicely. And then in the middle is a bass switch just for different bass um, responses. The other pedal that we've got here, which we're not going to try today, is a Range Master style treble booster. It's this one. We'll try that in the future. Uh, I could just look at that. Called the 108 Master. PC 108 uh, Range Master type treble booster. It's just beautiful. So we'll come back to that at some point. Yeah. So I would, you know, the the... the Slightly hilarious thing about Marcus's pedals is the price. I know. So a pedal like that made by one person to that standard should be way more expensive. Oh, yeah. But 
Marcus has a, a view on pricing and that's what he's pricing them at. So um, let's. Let, I wonder if his waiting list gets really long, the price might creep up a bit. But <laughs> yeah. But seriously, amazing value for money uh, for a handmade, truly boutique pedal. Yeah. Very, Lifetime very guarantee as well. Sorry, I'm, it sounds like I'm doing a sales job, but <coughs> no, just, no, it's, no, you don't stumble across this. You every don't. Day. As soon as I saw that, I yeah. thought this is really special. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's really wonderful stuff. Really cool. Yeah. Nice one, Marcus. Yes. Thank you for sending them in. So that so Mark sort of based this on Mark One. You're saying it. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's actually. It's he says a color sound tone bender. So that could just mean anything. Sure. Okay. But the, in the description, it says it sounds a little darker and grittier than a mm. Mark One. Okay. Cool. Well, that sort of moves nicely into um, the next guy I want to talk about, which is Steve Williams, who is the owner of Pig Dog. Yep. So Steve uh, studied electronics in the 80s, always played guitar. So he's a proper a proper engineer. Yep. And his thing is the right pedal with the right player can just move you. Mm. And Sorry so, about that, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, but you know, yeah, I know exactly what it's on about, and it's, it, it's. I first heard of Pig Dog through a friend of mine who's um, who had one of his fans and said, "You got to try this out," and ended up buying this, the Black Mark II, about it must be ten years ago now. And that was the first time I really connected with the Tone Bender style, right pedal. And the the work is incredible. The um, it's so like again, Steve. Steve is a one-man band. He does everything, and the the level of detail is absolutely astonishing. So I've got, I think now, you know, in the ten years I've got the Mark II. I've got the Juju, which is a Mark III. I've got his um, the the not the percolator fuzz. It's the um, harmonic. The harmonic perk, the, yeah, yeah, that that thing, the you, wedge, yeah, looking thing, yeah, yeah. I forget what the actual um, name of it is. The got a clone buzz around. Okay, so he does he does all the classics. He does all the classics, right? But the level, just the level of detail that he will go into, just things like the cases mm. and making sure that he's got the white wire and the correct switches and jacks. It's, it's unreal, yep. you know, proper, proper geek. In that sense, and I, I I love him dearly for it. Um, so yeah, is um, you know based in around London, and has been in this in the in the doing the electronics and music thing for a long time, and this is his passion. Um, so yeah, so I've got the the Mark II uh, and the Juju, which is basically a Mark III. Um, so if you have listened to the, the professional Mark II. <laughs> Try, try that with this track. Just awesome. Nice cleanup too. Yeah. For, for a tone bender. Yeah. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Really killer. I, um, while I was playing on the neck pickup there, I also rolled the tone off to give it that real kind of singing. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Very fluty. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if 
That's what I was looking for. Yeah. If a bandsaw played the flute, <laughs> that's that's what you'd get. Um, so that's, and I, I've used that that pedal for that. That's been my the high watermark for Mark II tone banners for me for forever. And I just yep. it's it's magic. Then I saw a picture that he posted online of the Juju, which is a Mark III, and the close up detail in this, it's just absolutely stunning. And I. I Bought it straight away. Said I had, you know, had to have it. Just you could buy, you could buy it in a standard case, but just to get that case with the artwork was like an extra one hundred and fifty quid <laughs> because the amount of time that went into actually making it like that yeah, yeah, is incredible. It's an incredible thing. Um, if you want to know more about tone benders, please watch the video we did a few weeks back. On um, we went to Macari's in London, the home of the tone bender, mm. uh, with Josh from JHS, and we went through a bunch of originals and a couple of reissues. So if you want to know more about tone benders. Please do that. So we've gone from Mark II to Mark III. To Mark III, yep. So yep. probably, you know, Germanium. And this, the Mark III is uh, Josh Scott's, Scott's favourite. We haven't honked anybody today. No, so we I, haven't. I, honk, 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 um, honk. But this is so, just switch me over. So you, you'll hear that this this has a, is a little bit more pronounced in the mid-range. <laughs> It's so funny because in a um, in in isolation, it's this really super nasal, not much bottom end sound that yeah. you listen to and go, "Wow, this is this is a thing." But yeah. in a band, lots of, again, lots of people struggle with making fuzzes cut in bands. Yeah, you're going to be heard playing yeah. that, aren't you? Because yeah. it's just right on the nose. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Really super beautiful. cool. I love it. I love super it. cool. Okay, um, the last one for today then. Let's look at Sakalis Audio Works from Athens in Greece. Now, um, we met the guys from Sakalis pretty much the same year that we met the guys from Jam Pedals. Right. Who are also in Athens in Greece. Also the same year we met the guys from Crazy Tube Circuits. Also in Greece. So all these cool pedals coming out of out of Greece. I don't know why that would be weird other than that we're very sort of Brit British and American centric with sure. pedals, aren't we? And Japanese, sure. I guess, with Boss. Um Started by Chris Sakalis years ago. He was in and around Athens doing stuff, including repairing gear, and he started building pedals. Mm. I think the first thing he built was a tube-driven overdrive. Right. And since then, they've they've grown into a, into a small company, um, make a lot of cool stuff. But in common, I think, with all of the brands we've looked at today, you just get this impression of overriding, driving passion. Yep for music absolutely yep. let alone guitar tone but just music yep. and, and all of these guys I think are driven by that passion which is what brings them all together today but a um, couple of things from Sakalis experience octave fuzz mm -hmm. separate octave and fuzz and the six which we'll get onto yep so fuzz on one side right <laughs> Thank you. 
咩？That is killer. It's good, isn't it? That octave thing, when you, that's mad. Yeah, it's, it's, there's this other button called damage here. <laughs> of course. To, of course it is. Seems to add like a lower octave to the normal fuzz. I never gave that. That's one. great. Here's just the normal octave. Okay, that is a lot of fun. Pretty cool, huh? That's really, really cool. Really unique a, kind of octave sound, It's a too. different take on octave. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. So one thing that these guys have always done, that when they don't deliver the stuff that you would... There's, there's always something different about it. And when we first saw the, uh, the six, uh, I think we were in Nam. We they were. Showed us. So it is like a combination of all the blues driver, blues breaker type pedals. Yeah, Timmy, Blues Breaker, and there's one more, which I can't remember, which I'm just going to have to check on my notes. Right. Because uh, I did write it down, making old man noises. But one thing that sort of blew me away about this is they told me when they designed it, there's no filter capacitors in the audio circuit. Yeah, no coupling capacitors at all. No. Which is e extremely yeah, unusual. I say, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking they must, they must be using, like, Trans transducers, like mini transformers or something in there to block DC, but it's such a it's such a cool thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, how could I forget the King of Tone then? The king, yes, right, Blues Breaker, King of Tone, Timmy type world, and it's called Six because it's got six modes. Okay, the little toggle switch to double the internal voltage as well, which is great. Uh, yeah, to save you having to plug in nine or eighteen volts. Thank you. 
It's so direct. It's so interesting. So you could, obviously, I don't know if you quite got that from all the fiddling and twiddling there, but um, over on the left is the sort of boost side. Mm. And you can go from crazy high headroom boost all the way through to fairly saturated, clipped overdrive distortion. Mm. Um, and importantly, apparently retain some feel in all of that. Hmm. Turn the delay on down. Wonderful. There aren't many overdrive pedals that will go from proper, really decent, clean boost mm. all the way through to that was hum. There wasn't wasn't heavy gain. Yeah, but it was harmonically absolutely all there and yeah. just felt all there. That's it. Feels great, doesn't it? Yeah, it really feels wonderful to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. Really so great. cool. Yeah. Really cool. This has been so much fun. Yeah, we should do this more. Yeah, we really should. Please tell us. Uh, the makers you would like to see us do this with because as much as anything you know we do get sent a lot of stuff Dan and I don't get a huge amount of time to kind of sit around and play stuff mm. which is kind of crazy given that that's what the show's about but this gives us a really good opportunity to do that and um, yeah what a absolutely banging bunch of five today yeah wonderful, wonderful. really cool uh, cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey in England. And in Australia would be Brisbane, Queensland of Brisbane in Queensland. <laughs> and that would be Pedal Empire. Sorry, I'm just, I'm overcome by tone today. <laughs> I, I know that feeling. Yeah. I get, see, I got all emotional. Um, yes, big, big, big shout out to Matt and the boys uh, out there. Uh, and Nikki. Uh, also, massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed mugs and t-shirts and strings and DNM drives and hoodies. And lots of things. Lots of things. Please go there, buy stuff. Keeps yep. us in the game. Yep. Uh, there are also some links in the description below um, that take you through to... Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Yeah. If you click those and buy stuff, uh, we get money, which is brilliant. Great. <laughs> and thank you, massive thank you to, uh, to all of our patrons, uh, on patreon.com. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Really appreciate it. Brilliant. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. <laughs>